Greetings, brethren. It is I, the Donkey, and we are back for Donkey vs. Beer. And on this episode, it is still the same day as the White Stag episode uh, that you have probably seen yesterday, hopefully, I don't know, maybe. Um, and I was so disappointed by that and really didn't want to finish it um, that I, I needed to reward myself with one of my favorites. So you get to see me have one of my favorites, and it is... Benedictina Hell. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of Germans who will be like, that's one of your favorites? That's boring. That's a standard beer. You can get this at every gas station. Yeah, that's not necessarily a bad thing, getting it everywhere, right? It's just, this also happens to be good, okay? And I will, I will die on this hill. This is a good beer. So, once again, this is a pale lager. As I've said before, uh, a lot of my favorite beers are pale lagers, because pale lagers are just awesome. And uh, this one is no exception. It is a lovely, lovely pale lager. And it is uh, probably the first one that I've had on this channel that uh, makes it clear why it is called that. Because this if you can see it in the light, is an incredibly pale beer. It's very, 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 very light in color. It's, uh... I would say this is an almost healthy piss. Right? Like, if, if this is your piss, you're not too far off. You should still drink a lot more water than what you're doing right now, but um, you're getting there. It's, it's getting better. You, you have taken care of yourself. You're not drinking as much soda or coffee. And, uh, you know, it's, it's improving, so good on you. Anyway, let's have a go. Ah, I just enjoy this so much. Now, it is true that this is a very, very common beer. Um, it depends, of course, where you are in Germany. Obviously, this is more of a South German thing where um, we do like our pale lagers a lot, so you can get pale lagers in a lot of different places. And um, most gas stations will have a pretty decent selection, on, uh, selection of beers, and they'll usually have all the standards. Bex is a standard, Bitburger is a standard, Warsteiner, uh, Erdinger or Paulaner, usually one of the two. Um, I don't know what else. Um, and then you get a few of the sort of standard foreign beers like uh, Heineken, Carlsberg, uh, Tuborg, uh, pff, uh, Corona, uh, Desperados. Uh, and I'm sure there's a couple more that I'm not thinking about right now. Uh, and then you usually also get a few local beers because you get local beers everywhere where it's local. And then there's a few extra ones, right? So, and um, usually in the south of Germany, at gas stations and at supermarkets, one of the most common ones that you will have repeated ones of is pale lagers, because they are so popular here that um, it just makes sense for any place that sells beer to just have a few types, you know, just have a bit of variety so people can choose one that they like. And, um, you know, the other popular types are Augustiner, Bayreuther, and Chiemseer is pretty popular as well. Mm. There's a few more, but those are sort of the general, general beers that you can get everywhere. Most of these are okay, I find. Um, if they're not from the really big breweries in Germany, like Bitburger, Warsteiner, Becks, etc., then they do have a good chance of being better because they are still somewhat local, right? I mean, obviously these, these beers are all from Bavaria, so they're, uh, the, you know, these ones, uh, these the sort of non-standard ones, so they're, they're not um, really local for me, but it's still kind of a regional thing, right? If the further away from Bavaria you go, the less likely you are going to see these at gas stations. Um, but here in the region, at least, this is very much a standard, and you can get it everywhere. And that, to a lot of people, seems to be a detractor. And I, I don't really get that attitude. Because 
A good beer isn't made by it being really exclusive and rare to get and oh, I had to order this beer online. I had to go and fill out an order form and send it in via mail and then they mailed me back my beer with a horse carriage. That's nonsense, all right? That's that's hipster bullshit. Don't expect that, don't require that. It's just it's just not necessary. We live in an age where you can get beers from pretty far away in a lot of uh, in a lot of other places. I mean, a couple of episodes ago I had Coopers. That's from Australia, from Germany. That's really far away. And I still got one and it's it's an actual one that was brewed in Australia. So it's not even a licensed one. So I don't see the problem with beers that are good just being available everywhere. I mean, I much prefer that to crap like Beck's being available everywhere. Beck's just isn't very good. You can get it everywhere, I get that, but that doesn't mean that beers that, you know, sort of spread around the country and around the uh, around the continent are necessarily bad. I mean, Rothaus Tannenzäpfle is a great beer, but, you know, it's also available across most of Germany. It just means that it's good. It actually caught on and the people making it made a whole bunch of money so they could invest in just spreading it, you know, and getting it to more people. And in my opinion, that's the same thing with Benedictina Hell. It's just a good beer. Right, let me actually talk about this beer. So, when I was talking about the Pale Lagers in my German Beer Week video. I mentioned that they are oftentimes, um, because of the lower fermentation, they're very regional, and uh, what differentiates them from Pilsners is often that they have less of that extreme bitterness. This one, no exception, it almost has none of that bitterness. If, if that is something that bothers you about beers, is the, the real, real bitterness that, that comes with it, this might actually be one for you to try. It has very little of that, and um, kind of uncharacteristically for a Helles, uh, which often are more on the sort of, they're a little bit more uh, fresh and uh, refreshing beers, where they're sort of, you really associate them with summer. This one has that too, but it also has a really interesting sort of savory, almost bready note to it. It's, it's almost something that you would expect from, uh, from like a stout or a, you know a, a peasant's type beer. And this still has that, which to me makes it so interesting in flavor because it's just such a, such a bastard. You know, it's right in between and and just grabs things from from beers that it's not even you know, associated with. So it's it's just, to me, that makes it such an interesting beer to drink. But at the same time, it's so easy to drink. It, it just, it's smooth and there's no, like you, I mean, let me have a go. You can drink it quickly. There's almost no acidity to it no buildup of this sort of bitter, acrid grossness that some beers get. It just, it's such a nice rounded flavor. So lovely. And um, it does not, it doesn't really impose itself. You know, it's not, it's not one of those beers where you drink it and that's all you taste for the next three hours. Not, not saying that those beers are necessarily bad. That is, you know, it's a different experience and it's, it's still a good experience. But in this case, it's just, this is the type of beer that you can have and you just have a conversation, you know? And it's just, it's just, it enhances whatever you do. It's just, it's just there. It's just a companion that supports you and that cheers you on in your endeavors. And it doesn't hold you back. It doesn't impose itself on you. It's just, it's just a supportive friend that always has their hand on your shoulder and says, you've got this champ. I'm here for you. I cheer for you. I'm your friend. <laughs> and that's what this beer is in a bottle. And I really, really appreciate that. It's just, it's, it's so nice. 
And uh, on top of that, of course, it also gets you really drunk really quickly because uh, it is a 5.0 percentage beer, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it also really doesn't taste it. It, it tastes a lot it tastes a lot less alcoholy than you would expect from 5.0 and that makes it very very dangerous it's kind of like the the sort of um the beer version of an alco pop you know one of those uh smirnoff and cranberry and lots of sugar and stuff that they you know i'm i'm just showing my age because that was like 20 years ago when they tried to do that and and, and push those weird soda alcohols on, on kids. Nowadays, I guess it's the, the hard seltzers, you know, where they just try to get you drunk with no taste of alcohol and it's just, it just tastes like a sparkling water or whatever. So anyway, but yeah, this, this is the beer version of that. It's, it's so gentle in taste and um, the breadiness to it, it, it almost makes you think that it's non-alcoholic because that it's, it gives you that same sort of, um, it, it doesn't taste like a non-alcoholic beer, obviously, but it, it gives you that same sort of impression that there's more, this is more of a malt beer than it is an actual beer. And it's so bizarre and really messes with your head, but uh, it's so enjoyable to drink. It's, it's definitely one of the ones that um, if I just want to have a beer and I'm not adventurous, I'm just, um, I'm just exhausted after a day of work and I just want to get a beer to just... Uh, clear down, stop thinking about stuff, just have a beer and, you know, create a zen moment. This is one of those beers that I will reach for. Uh, another one of those I have already talked about is Kilkenny, uh, just because of the nostalgia aspect to it. Uh, but this one is purely for the, for the, because it, it, I just love the flavor of it. I just love this beer. I really enjoy it. So, um, yeah, I, I will. I will. I will stand in the in the shop and think. I want to drink a beer. What am I gonna get? And I see a, a crate of this sitting there, and I, oh yes, that's exciting. It's something I've had a lot of times before, but I still like it a lot. So, yeah, that's that's what this beer is to me. It's just, it's it's a comfortable blanket, uh, and um, because it shares those those different characteristics. It's great in the summer. It's still a lovely, refreshing beer, but those bready notes still make it so comfortable to drink in the winter. Um, it, it might, even if it's cold outside, this is still like a, a comfortable meal and oh, how lovely it is. So I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10. To me, this is very, very, very close to the perfect beer. Uh, I'm sure at some point I will tell you what my favorite beer is, what the, the one of the very, very few 10 out of 10s is on my list. Um, it's just, yeah, this is a good one. And uh, spoilers, this is in my top 10. Cheers. Ah, really love this beer. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope that you all have a lovely evening and please join me on another day when I tackle another beer. Take care.